I think that REITs are the best investment opportunity in today's market. I filmed quite a few videos on this topic, but to make it short, REITs have seen their share prices crash over the past year, even as their rents grow really rapidly. And as a result, now you have a lot of REITs that are priced at huge discounts to the net asset values. In the most extreme examples, some REITs are now priced as low as 50 cents on the dollar. And so I view this as a way to buy real estate at a large discount to its fair value. And I think that I'm going to enjoy very significant upside potential eventually as the market conditions normalize and interest rates return to lower levels. I think the best approach to capitalize on this opportunity is to be very selective and build a well-diversified portfolio of individual REITs focusing on the best opportunities that the market has to offer. But the other alternative would be to simply buy a REIT ETF and be done with it. This will give you broad exposure to the entire sector at a low cost and I think that this would also probably yield pretty good returns in the coming years because all REITs are so heavily discounted. But in today's video I want to give you five reasons why I personally have chosen to not buy a REIT ETF. But before I get into it I want to remind you that the two-week free trial is still active for my read newsletter so if you're interested in accessing my entire real money read portfolio just click the first link in the description of this video. So the first reason why I'm not buying REIT ETFs is because I think that alpha is really attainable in the REIT sector. In some market sectors like large caps in the US it's very difficult to outperform the market because there are so many people competing for opportunities and so you've probably seen some studies done on this topic most active managers don't manage to cover their fees and they end up underperforming their benchmarks. The REIT sector is different. I think that because REITs are a bit of a weird category fitting between real estate and stocks, they have relatively fewer knowledgeable market participants. It's a bit of a weird situation because stock market investors don't really understand real estate and real estate investors don't really trust the stock market. And because REITs are a bit of this odd category fitting right in between, it ends up having a lot more pricing inefficiencies. And as a result, studies have shown that active managers are actually able to earn alpha that more than cover their fees in the REIT sector. I think that myself I have a bit of an advantage over most investors because I come from a private equity real estate background so I have an understanding of real estate. I combine this with the CFA education. I've passed all three exams. Then on top of that I also have a large following on Seeking Alpha with roughly 60,000 followers and I think that this gives me a bit of a better access to management teams since they want to talk with me. And so overall I think that I might have a bit of an edge over the average market participant and so it makes sense for me to be active. Before I go into the next reason, could you please like this video? It will help me a lot. Thank you very much. Then the second reason why I don't really like most REIT ETFs is that they are market cap weighted, which means that most of their capital is going to go towards the really large and well-known REITs. The issue with this is that you end up having a lot of capital chasing a limited number of companies irrespective of their fundamentals. And as a result, this is really pushing their valuations a lot higher than the smaller and lesser known REITs. In many cases I'm able to find two comparable REITs, a large one and a small one with very substantial valuation gaps. You might have the small REIT trading at 10 times FFO and the large one at 18 times FFO despite the smaller one growing at a faster pace and having stronger catalysts. Third reason why I'm not a big fan of ETFs is that they invest across the board in every sector and in the REIT market there are quite a few sectors that I would rather avoid today. I'm not a big fan of offices, you probably understand why. I'm not a big fan of hotels either. Hotels have historically been the lowest performing asset class of the REIT sector because there's a lot of capex to maintain your property. It's very competitive. It's also very cyclical. Now it's also challenged by technology because there's less business travel. People are setting up more Zoom meetings and so I try to skip this sector especially at today's valuations. And then there are some other sectors. I, I don't really like mortgage REITs. I have a video coming up on this topic. I also don't really like data center REITs because I fear that they're properties might become obsolete over time and so the depreciation might be a real expense in this specific property sector but you get the point here I'm not a big fan of every sector and so I'd rather avoid some of them by building my own portfolio. Fourth reason REIT ETFs are going to invest in all sorts of REITs irrespective of their management and I think that the management is the number one driving reason behind outperformance and you can quite easily identify REITs that are poorly managed that suffer significant conflicts of interest to give you 
you an example, you could simply skip all the externally managed reads and that would already boost your average performance because historically externally managed reads have done a lot worse than internally managed reads because of all the conflicts of interest that they suffer. But ETFs are not in the business of picking and choosing and so they invest across the board whether it makes sense or not. Then the fifth and final reason I find that the low cost ETFs that are available in today's market offer very low dividend yields of around 3 to 4 percent. I think that real estate should be an income driven investment for and foremost and so this yield isn't really enough to satisfy me. I'm trying to get closer to the double of that uh, 6 to 8 percent because I like to get paid while I wait for my long-term thesis to play out. The market can be very unpredictable in the short run causing REITs at sometimes to drop in value even as they grow their cash flow and so I really like to get paid while I wait. It helps me to remain patient. There are of course a few ETFs that offer much higher yields than this but then the problem with them is that typically they will have much higher fees and or they will heavily invest in offices, mortgages and other risky sectors that I prefer to avoid. And so for these reasons I think that I can do better on my own by being very selective and building my own active REIT portfolio. I will film a video on my entire selection process someday but to give you a few factors to consider here is I avoid all externally managed REITs, I avoid also other REITs that suffer conflicts of interest, I pay a lot of attention to net asset values to make sure I get to buy real estate at a nice discount, I try to get a higher yield to get paid while I wait, I avoid property sectors that I think are going to suffer in the long run and remain value traps, I also invest quite a bit abroad, in many cases I'm able to find similar REITs in foreign markets that have much better prospects than their peers in the US. And so by following such simple principles I've historically been able to beat the average of the sector by quite a significant margin and if you want to yourself try to be an active investor feel free to join my read newsletter for a two-week free trial it will give you access to my entire portfolio all my research all my latest uh, transactions in real time and much more. Finally if you thought that this was useful I would really appreciate if you could like the video it will help me grow this channel thank you very much and see you at my next one bye bye.